Hello folks, welcome to another episode of the Stupid CS Guy. This time we'll do something different. We are going to learn and understand the internals of a highly available key value store. Now, why do we want to understand the internals? The key value store itself is a very, very complicated system. It employs multiple concepts of distributed systems and system design. By understanding how a highly available key value store works, we will know what are the concepts that are getting used and we can use those same concepts while building or designing our distributed systems. Now for doing this, we will look at a very specific paper. We will look at Amazon Dynamo. Not to be confused with DynamoDB, Amazon Dynamo is a the paper that came out in 2007, which talks about the internals of Dynamo, Amazon's highly available key value store. Amazon came out with a paper in 2007 talking about some of the concepts that they used to build this really high scale and highly available key value store. Now the paper is very advanced. The way I'll do it is I'll break up, break it up into smaller parts. And then we will go and we'll learn about all of the system design concepts that were used in building this highly available key value store. This will help you if, if somebody asks you to design a highly available key value store. Not only that, the concepts that I will introduce here, you would be able to use those in your normal system design interview question, questions as well. Some say the Dynamo paper ushered in a new generation of database technologies. Some of the concepts that you would see are things that we take, take for granted today. But in 2007, those were some of the new concepts. From a historical perspective, the advent of NoSQL databases came about from two important papers. One is Google's Big Table, on which Hypertable, HBase, and all of those are based. And the second is the Dynamo paper, on which Cassandra, React, Aerospy, Project Voldemort is based. So whatever you learn in this paper, you could apply to all of these Dynamo family of database. We're going to look at the Dynamo paper, which talks about how Amazon's highly available key value store really works. So we will approach this paper in exactly the same way as how we design systems. First, we will look at requirements and then we will look at the constraints. You can read about the abstract and the other parts offline. Those are fairly easy to understand parts. So we'll first jump into the system assumptions and requirements. Like if you're building a key value store, what would be the requirements that you would target? Let's see what Amazon did target. The first part is the query model. So you can see the query model here. This is a key value store. It's a simple read and write operations on a data item that is uniquely identified by a key. That's exactly what we would expect out of a key value store, right? You have a key and you get the value. And these values are JSON blobs. So ideally, they would be in the order of few KBs and they we would not expect them to be large files. And that is exactly what Dynamo expects also. Dynamo targets applications that need to store objects that are relatively small, usually less than 1 MB. Then let's talk about ACID properties, one of my favorite. ACID stands for Atomicity, Consistency, Isolation and Durability. This is something that we have been taught in our colleges. And generally, out of college, we are familiar with MySQL, which is a database that supports ACID transactions. Now, Amazon says that ACID guarantees tend to have poor availability. And hence, if you see my videos, I keep on harping saying that when you're doing system design, try and use NoSQL. So this has been widely acknowledged by both the industry and the academia. Dynamo targets applications that operate with weaker consistency, the C in ACID, if this results in high availability. Now this is going back to our cap theorem and we will talk about this in much detail as to why Amazon had to make this trade off. Remember that Amazon was building this because they wanted to build a highly available system. Dynam is a highly available key store and of course they would have to trade off with consistency. Next is Dynamo does not provide any isolation guarantees and permits only single key updates. Quick note about isolation. Isolation in acid is often misunderstood. You can have various kinds of isolation. You can have read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read and whatnot. Here in Dynamo, you do have the read uncommitted isolation, which that means is unless a, a write is committed, other reads would not be able to see that value. So if you have multiple connections to the database and each of these uh, requests to database are reading, unless one of the writes are actually successful and committed, the new value will not be shown 
uh, in other reads. Now for the other transactions in asset compliant databases in a transaction, you can update multiple rows. And if one of the update fails, you you would roll back and you would not show the change at all. So those sort of isolations are not supported in Dynamo. Let's say for an API call, you read from the database two times. The first value that you see and the second value that you can see might be very different. So there is no lock uh, as to say that while I am reading, nobody else will be able to write. And the same thing for you know multi updates. So if you're updating multiple keys, uh, you would not be able to synchronize saying if the last one fails, I would re reverse the other ones or till the last one succeeds, I would not show the new value of or the other keys to the reads. That is those sort of isolations are not possible. And since there are no locks, that is what makes Dynamo very, very fast. Next, coming to the efficiency. Of course, it should be highly efficient. And that is the key driver for Amazon to build such a system. In Amazon's platform services have to have stringent latency requirements, which are in general measured at triple nines percentile of the distribution. Given that state access plays a crucial role in service operation, which is of course, the state is very, very important for service to operate. Uh, the storage system must be capable of, of meeting very stringent SLAs. Uh, services must be able to configure Dynamo such that they consistently achieve their latency and throughput requirements. Very important term latency and throughput is what Dynamo is optimized for. Of course, so it's a game of trade-offs and Amazon understands that. It says the trade-offs are in performance, cost efficiency, availability and durability guarantees. You want one thing more, the other one goes, goes down. Another assumption is this paper came out in 2007 and Dynamo was meant to be an internal system used by Amazon's own services. Which means some of the stuff like uh, authentication and authorization are out of scope. And we are assuming that Dynamo is not is running in a non-hostile environment. The second point is the way Dynamo is architected, especially in this paper, uh, is that each service uses its own distinct instance of Dynamo. To think about the checkout service using its own distinct instance of Dynamo, maybe the recommendation service maybe using its own distinct instance of Dynamo, and it's not like one Dynamo-based DB for the entire org. That is why. Dynamo targets scalability up till few hundreds of storage hosts. If it had to target like for the entire com company, this would be really, really less. Now that we know the requirements of the key value store, the second thing that we should know is what are the constraints of designing a system? Let's go into the constraint bit. So the key principles embraced in the design are first is incremental stability. That means it should be very easy to scale out the Dynamo storage hosts. You can easily add or remove nodes based on your capacity. It should Im have minimal impact on both the operators of the system and the system itself. It, it should not be very difficult to add you know, new storage hosts. Then the entire point of Dynamo would fail because if you have a flash sale and if you're getting a lot of data and if you want to add a storage host, if that takes a lot of time, then that's not good for your service. Second is symmetry, very, very important. Every node in Dynamo should have the same set of responsibilities as its peers. It means there is nothing such as a you know, master node or, or a primary node or, or somebody as a slave. There is no such thing. All these nodes are equal and these nodes are virtually indistinguishable in terms of responsibility. Which leads us to the second point is decentralization, which you can see here. Let me just, but if you see decentralization, uh, it is an extension of symmetry. The design should favor decentralized peer-to-peer -peer techniques over centralized control, which means you do not have one server uh, managing the health of the state of the database. And if that server goes down, irrespective of whether your other machines are up or down, your entire database is down. That is one of the design that they did not want to have. Uh, what is, so they completely avoided that design problem. They are saying it's completely decentralized so even if one node goes down the other nodes are not affected uh, and as in no single point of failure very rightly so when we are designing systems we always keep talking about no single point of failure and that's what design decentralization is and the last is heterogeneity now these databases would exist for a period of you know 10 20 years during those times there would be upgradation of disks there would be new research and we will have new capabilities in in the computers so ideally we should be able to add hosts 
which look very different from the first host which was added. So let's say you add a host in 1990 and then you add a host in 2000. Those hosts would look very different, would have different capacities and would probably have different processing powers as well. And that is where the heterogeneity comes in. It does not mean that if you have to add something which is like uh, one TB in a database cluster which has you know 50 GB machine, you don't need to upgrade each of those hosts. Only one, the, the new one can be added very easily and the rest, all of those can keep functioning. That is heterogeneity. So these are the main constraints. So the just to cover this again, we want incremental scalability, easy ability to add new nodes. We want symmetry. No single point of failure. All of these machines have similar set of responsibilities. Decentralization, there is no concept of you know the master node or you know the slave node or secondary primary, no such things. It's completely a decentralized system. And the last is heterogeneity. It should be able to accommodate heterogeneous hosts which differ in storage and processing capabilities. Now let's go and talk about some database architectures.